I'm feeling good. Uh, we'll see where I am after this weekend. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna be happy until I get the title, until I keep defending it, and nobody can beat me. You know, that's when I'm happy, and that's when I, uh, I'll be satisfied. The fight, you know, when nobody can touch me, I'm the champ. Um, other than that, I feel good after these two wins. Uh, I'm moving up in the rankings, and all lightweights beware. Watch out. How did you feel about your performance overall? Was there anything specific that you prepared ahead of time for this fight, and how did you feel about your execution? Um, nothing specific, you know, just to, you know, stay out of his strength. You know, move, move, move. Don't get caught with his takedowns. Stay away from his power punches, and um, you know, use my speed and uh, movement to end the fight, which I did. So I'm really proud I executed my fight well. Um, I did get hit a little bit too many times from him. Um, you know, I consider Gleason a, a slow lightweight, and I shouldn't have got hit that many times in the first round. So, other than that, great performance, and I'm happy with the win. People are always talking about Gleason about size and how big he is for a lightweight. Did you bring in any uh, unusually large training partners? To work with him um, no, not necessarily. Um, you know, I got plenty of heavy guys that are lightweights. Uh, Abel Trujillo, you know, he's a lightweight of mine. Um, Louis Buscape, he's another guy that uh, is up and coming in World Series of Fighting. You know, he's a real big, strong Brazilian with a uh, you know great jujitsu. And um, all my other partners, you know, George Santiago's heavy. I've been working with him. Um, you know, it's just good. So nothing changed in particular. Just so, you know, usual training partners. You know, Rashad always has so many great things to say about you, and has for a long time said that people need to watch out for his son. Uh, <laughs> what kind of influence has been on you, and and how has he helped you become a better fighter? My son, Rashad Evans. <laughs> He's, uh, he's helped me out a lot, man. Uh, the last, you know, three and a half, four years, we've been uh, really close, you know, inside the practice room and outside, and I pick his brain any chance I can get to just, um, you know, I try to mimic my UFC career around his. Um, I still think he's one of the greatest in his division and in the UFC. You know, he's a poster boy. He carries himself well inside and outside the cage. And um, whenever I can get with him and work is a blessing for me. And, um, you know, he stays on me constantly about what I need to do. And, you know how I need to carry myself inside and out, and you know it's just a, it's a good big brother to have. Yeah. You know, if there was a little while where the Black Zillions seemed to be slumping, then you had Kenny Monday in there, Henry comes in, all of a sudden things start turning around. Vitor's crushing it. Everybody seems to be doing pretty well. What's what's what are you guys drinking down there? <laughs> what's going water. on in the water? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been the same thing, man. You know, we're in our slump, but other than that, um. I think it was because we got so much attention when we first came on the scene. Everybody's like, oh my God, we got to see what they're doing. And then a great team starts losing and not everybody wants to bad mouth them and talk. But um, we didn't do anything different. I think the main thing that's been helping us is we haven't been getting a lot of attention. You know, we've been able to work and, you know, get back to the basics and do our thing and um, win fights, you know. We're, um, we have such a tight bond down in Florida. It's just um, incredible, you know. Other than the MMA team, we're a family, and that's all that matters to us. And how about the addition of Kenny Monday? How much has that helped your uh, skill set come along? Uh, it's helped us tremendous. Um, to have somebody his caliber of wrestling in that gym room is, um, you know, crazy. Um, our wrestling practices are as intense as possible. Um, you know, going into this fight, that was a huge thing. You know, I, I've had off and on problems with my wrestling. Even though I came from a wrestling background, I kind of got away from it and moved into striking. And he's helped me um, revamp my wrestling as well as the whole team. And <coughs> nobody's taking us down. We're getting knockouts and we're taking people down. And it's working out. Is it hard not to let it get in your head when you start bad mouthing and you guys lose a couple and everybody starts talking about it? Is it hard for you guys not to, to focus on it? Um, it is hard. Of course, you're always going to listen to, you know, the, the critics and the people, you know, bad-mouthing you, but at the same time, you just got to throw it out the window, and um, hard work, you know, pays off. Results matter. That's all that matters. So anybody can talk all they want, but at the end of the day, we're running fights, and, um, you know, we're moving up. Like you said, he hit you a bit more than uh, expected. Were you expecting him to try to take you to the ground during this fight? I was. I was expecting him to shoot as soon as the round started. Um, I think he really had problems with finding me. You know, he couldn't set up his shots. I was moving too much for him, and that was a huge part of our game plan to do. And um, I kind of froze him a little bit, and I got him confused, and it led to a knockout. Where do you think you stand in the division, and who would you like to fight Um, I would like to see me right under the top ten, if not in the top ten. Um, I want to fight anybody who's in front of me. You know, from one through fifteen or one through twenty, wherever they stack me in this division, it doesn't matter to me. Um, you know, one through 50 in this division is good. You know, everybody's great in this division. Everybody can, you know, fight for the title. They can be in the top 10. So whoever's in front of me, you know, I want their spots and I want the number one spot and I'll fight them. There's no one that you've been watching lately that you think, hey, I'd like to test my skills against? Anybody in the top 10. 
And like I said, anybody that can get me up there, you know, um, I'm willing to fight him. You know, Jim Miller's fighting um, the Habib guy, you know, um, I, I don't, anybody. If you're in the top 10, I want to fight you. If you're above me in the rankings, I want to fight you. Uh, how is having someone like Ryan Loco with the bright black zillions making you guys look good all over social media? Oh, Loco's a superstar. Come on, what are you talking about? You guys seen the pictures? Um, he's incredible, man. Uh, I was just talking to him, uh, you know, not too long ago, man. He's awesome to have. Not only as a guy to help us with social media and pictures, but um, a really good best friend, you know, to sit there and listen to anything you got to talk about. And um, he's willing to help you, you know anywhere he needs to help. If it helps your career, he's there for you. And he's just a great guy to have around us in the gym. And he takes pictures and makes us look like superstars. So yeah, you win, you win all around. Yeah. You had a bit of a, a tough skater and lost to Reza, uh, but then you rebounded with the decision win. But how much better does it feel to actually score a knockout and you know, finish? It feels good, man. I've always you know, considered myself a power puncher and then I kind of got away from it and I wasn't getting my knockouts, I was forcing them. You know, so I stopped forcing them and I just started working my game plan and uh, they're all coming together. You know, those last two losses I had, I just kind of, I felt, you know, unbeatable. You know, I went three in a row, I felt like nobody could beat me. And I lost two in a row and then, oh my God, I'm gonna get cut. I need to get my shit back together. And um, you know, I got two wins in a row and, you know, that will never happen again. I'm always gonna stay humble, grounded and, um, you know, just working hard.